humans, I'm Mr. King. Hanyohaseyo, ladies and gentlemen. Alright, okay, so now let's go into tips on answering the planning experiment part for your paper 6. So first, when it comes into planning experiment, okay, you always make sure that okay, your answer, okay, always include this point, like example first, okay, you always answer in terms of the variables, which means in your steps, isn't it, okay, you have to mention all the variables, like example, okay, uh, you have to include the constant variables, the manipulated variables, and also the responding variables. So what's constant variables like example, okay? You have to mention what is the mass of the solid that you use or what is the volumes of the liquid that you use. Okay, the constant variables, okay, the variables that you have to keep the same for all the, uh, for all the reactants and so on. Okay, whereas for manipulated variables, okay, it's the factors that you are testing. All right, like example, okay, uh, tests on the temperatures on, uh, on the reaction. So different temperature will be the manipulated variables. Okay, responding means how you record the result, how you obtain the result. Okay, then next, we need to name all the operators used. Okay, you have to name all the apparatus. Like for example, how do you measure the volumes of liquid? How do you measure the temperature? How do you measure the mass of the solid? Okay, using what? Okay, you have to name all the apparatus. And then lastly, you need to give a general conclusion. Remember, okay, it is a general conclusion. It is not a conclusion that gives you an exact result. Like example, okay, you are given with solid A and B. Okay, which one has greater rate of reaction? Uh, so your conclusion, isn't it? I mean, you cannot write something like this. Like solid A uh, has a better rate of uh, better rate of reaction compared to solid B. No, you cannot do uh, you cannot do it this way because you see in this case we have no idea what is A and B, and we do not know what is the result will be like. Okay, so we need to give a general conclusion. Like example, okay, you can do it this way. A solid that produces more bubbles can have a greater rate of reaction, something like this. Alright, so basically just remember, okay, basically you are, you are writing a procedure, okay, so that other people can repeat the experiment, okay, by looking at the procedure itself. Alright, so you see, let's go, to, uh, let's go into the example. See, let's look at this given with this. Iodine dissolved in two different solvents, so-called air toner and hexane. So you are asked to plan an experiment to find out which solvent iodine okay, is the most soluble at room temperature. So you see, you are provided with iodine, two solvent, and, uh, and also some common labs apparatus. So ask yourself, so what is the constant variables in this case? We need to use same mass of iodine same volumes of solvent okay and then what is the manipulated variables uh, different types of solvent because you see we are testing what which one solvent is a better solvent okay and responding so how do we measure the result so in this case season in case we can measure the uh, the total mass of iodine dissolved okay uh, the one that dissolved more okay means it is most soluble all right so first uh, first we can you have to mention, okay, prepare like example, okay, 100 cm cubes of ethanol, okay, using what, remember, okay, you have to name the apparatus. So we can use measuring cylinder. Okay, then next, we prepare like example, okay, 10 grams of iodine solid using what? Okay, we can use measuring balance. Okay, then we mix both into a beaker and stir. Okay, I mean we stir it because we want to ensure that okay, they get dissolved better and faster. And after that, we filter out all the undissolved solid. Yeah, uh, which is the iodine that didn't get dissolved. So you see, before we measure the mass of the solid, isn't it? Okay, remember, first, 
you have to dry the solid because you want to prevent the water droplets on the surface of the uh, of the solid isn't okay from affecting the result. Okay, so you have to dry the residue using what? Okay, ha, using filter paper. Okay, and measure the mass using measuring balance okay then after that okay ha huh? manipulate the variable so how do we carry the experiment okay so just mention okay ha huh? repeat the experiment using uh, what is the another solvent okay hexane that's it that's it all right okay then followed by what conclusion remember okay a general conclusion so how is the general conclusion for this uh, experiment looks like okay so we know that okay, the solvent uh, with the least mass of solid uh, remains in the solution is the most soluble that's it so this is how it looks like See, it's not that hard. See, easy full marks. Alright. Okay, and then another example. See, given with this. Yeah, given with these two sorts, yeah, the energy change when each uh, dissolve in water is endothermic. Huh? So plan an experiment to show which of these two sorts produces the larger endothermic energy change program. Your answer should include any measurements you would need to take and record and how the result could be used to draw a conclusion. Same thing. So ask yourself, what is the constant variables here? It would be uh, same volumes of water, isn't it? Uh, and then same mass of salt. Okay, then manipulated, okay, uh, different salt. Uh, so uh, responding will be the temperature changes. Okay, uh, so how it looks like so very first step okay we can just mention okay prepared okay um, 100 cm cubes of given here distilled water using what uh, using measuring cylinder okay then we have to measure the initial temperatures of the water using what okay we use thermometer okay because in this case okay we are comparing the temperature changes so this is the so you have to measure the initial temperature before you add in the salt then next okay we measure like example okay, 10 grams of potassium nitrate and we add the salt into the water. Okay, then next, remember, okay, we have to stir the mixtures because we want to ensure they can okay, they dissolve better. Okay, then lastly, we measure the final temperatures of the solutions. That's it. Okay, then what is the manipulative variable? Okay, we repeat. Uh, so next we repeat the experiment using using what? So the another sort is ammonium chloride. Okay, then what's the conclusion? Yeah, okay, I see. Which one produces the larger endothermic energy change? Let me see. Endothermic. The temperature changes, isn't it? Huh? So the one with the greater temperature decrease, okay? Huh? Temperature decrease, okay? Produces larger endothermic energy. Huh? So the salt with the uh, greatest decrease in temperature Produces okay, larger endothermic energy change 
program. That's it. Right, you see, it's actually not that hard. Okay, you see, given here. Calcium carbonate, calcium hydroxide, and calcium oxide can be used to neutralize the acid. So plan an investigation to find out which of these calcium compounds neutralizes the acid most effectively. So blah, 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 blah. Ah, so what is the constant variables? Okay, so you see, constant variables over here is an AK. Huh? We have to use the same mass of the compound. Okay, then we test with what? We test with acid, isn't it? Ah, so what is the manipulated variables over here? Okay, it will be calcium compound. You see three different calcium compound. And responding will be, uh, responding will be the amounts of acid that they can neutralize. Ah, so eventually, okay, you have something like this. See, huh, the very first step. Prepare 10 grams of calcium carbonate using machine's balance. Okay, then we add phenolphthalein into the compound. Why? Because we need to know okay, uh, when is the end point. Okay, then we record the initial volumes of the acid. Okay, because in this case, it's an AK, we need to check how much acid is needed to neutralize the calcium compound. Okay, then we add the acid slowly into the compound, okay, which is calcium carbonate. We stir and mix the solution, okay, and we stop adding the acid once the color changes, which means once the indicator changes color or once it turns neutral. Okay, huh? so we stop adding the acid. Okay, then we record the volumes of acid added. Alright, okay, then manipulated variables, okay, we repeat the experiment using another calcium compound, see like example, calcium hydroxide, calcium oxide. Okay, so what's the conclusion? Uh, the calcium compound that neutralizes the largest volumes of acid is the most effective, isn't it? Uh, so you see, this is how it looks like. So this is how you tackle the planning experiment questions. You see, it's actually not that hard. Okay, as long as okay, you, you always make sure okay, your procedure isn't it, okay? you mention all the constant variables, uh, manipulated variables, responding variables, you can easily get all the marks. Alright, yeah, so this is how it looks like. Best of luck. Thanks. Remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel. See you again. Bye.